Good morning, dear friends. I'm so glad that uh, we are still alive to face this new day. And uh, before we begin our activities, let us, uh, as usual, sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his voice. And I pray that today's meditation will set you on a new level of your life. Uh, today's meditation is centered around um, Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. And since it is a long passage, I won't read the whole thing, but a few opening verses, let me read it for you. What is in uh, chapter 12? Here it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that uh, hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, let me close with that. And I am sure all of you will remember what this chapter contains. Maybe you should read after the meditation time. What follows in chapter 12 of Hebrews hinges uh, on what is in chapter 11. Now the author is saying, run well your race of Christian life. Not because of what these witnesses in chapter 11 see in us, but because of what we see in them. These heroes of faith in chapter 11, what do we see in them? And if you read this chapter in 11, you will read these things. We see conquering faith in them. They conquered kingdoms and administered justice and shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames and um, escaped the edge of the sword whose weaknesses was turned to strength. Women receiving their dead alive, raised to life again, and then read on, you will read more. They were destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. Oh, they all died in their faith without receiving what was promised. They saw them by the eyes of faith. Chapter 11 closes with these words. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us they be made perfect. We see in these witnesses heroism total abandonment to the one who has called them and promised them something beyond description. They lived for the promise and they fought for the promise and they gave their lives for the promise and they didn't see it but gave their lives for it. And now waiting for us to join them, to be made perfect, and to be in their company. And along with us only, they are going to be made perfect. The question is, will we be worthy to be in their company? Now, as far as God was concerned, he planned something better, something better for us. Are we worthy of what God has planned for us? 
These are the questions that comes up when we read chapter 11. And uh, then compared these heroes of faith with ours. How is our heroism compared to their heroism? Think of Abraham. In response to one dream, one vision, and uh, one command to be obeyed by faith, God simply called Abraham and said, Abraham, you leave your hometown, your city, you leave your family, you leave all that is familiar to you, give them all up and just start walking. And God did not even say where to. He said, I will show you as you in obedience begin to walk, as you walk, I will keep on showing you where you must head for. And he came out, not knowing where he was going. Whatever he could carry on uh, just a few donkeys, he gathered them and put them on these donkeys and he started. Today, he is recognized as the father of a three major religious faith, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Was he a perfect man? No. He had his weaknesses and his own problems. And he started walking looking for a city whose founder and builder was God himself. And he did not waver in his faith. He was not perfect, but he did not waver in his faith. He believed and trusted his God and remained faithful and loyal to the one who called him. And he became father of the faithful and a friend of God. And God trusted him as well. In one place, in Genesis, it says, why God, no, no, in, in Deuteronomy, I think, why God chose to bless Abraham. Because God trusted him that he would teach his children and then their children and all those who will come after a generation, one generation after another generation, all the commandments and statutes that God has showed him and taught him. He trusted. And Abraham proved to be faithful. And that's why God chose Abraham and blessed him. Now, God has promised him that he will not only bless him and his descendants, but many nations will come out of him and Isaac, and these nations shall he bless because of Abraham and Isaac. And, um, and so we see, if you study history, nations were born and emperors were born of him, and kings and rulers of many nations came out of him. And even today, who does not know Abraham? His name itself was adopted by millions of people all around the world. And let me give you this hint. No one whoever he or she may be, 
in response to God's call and invitation, gave up everything and came out in order to follow Jesus Christ. Not a single of such people ever had to regret for their decision to follow Christ. Yes, initially, it seems they were empty of everything they owned. They gave them up. As Peter once told Jesus, Jesus, we gave up all our business, our fishery business. We gave up all in order to follow you. What we will we get? So initially, those who hear the call of God, maybe while listening to an evangelistic message or attending a meeting or by yourself reading the word of God, you felt or you feel that God is calling you to take a step of faith and come out and begin to follow him in obedience. And the, and the history proves what we gain from God by following Him and obeying Him is much, much more, not only more precious, but more in quantity as well than we give up. Because the Bible says, God is no one's debtor. And you will never regret, my friend, There is only one thing that you will not regret in life. That is the decision you make to follow Jesus Christ. You will never regret it. Because Jesus will prove to you that he is more than life to you. More precious. So run well. That is the message. Read chapters 11 and chapter 12 of Hebrews. Meditate on it by yourself and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. And if we are lacking anything, we must make it up. Ask God to forgive us and then let us do what is needful. If there are things that we still have to give up, give up. God is no man's debtor. God bless you as you take the step of faith like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He is the same God. And you are given more evidence that God will ever remain faithful to his promises. God bless you as you take the step of faith and begin to follow him. Amen. Lord, I pray that your people who heard this message and who will be hearing in the days to come, Lord, I pray that let, let faith begin to rise up within them and the boldness to be obedient to God even to the extent as Apostle Paul did, he gave up everything in order to have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friend. This is the great day. Have a wonderful day ahead. Amen.